You're listening to Hashtag No Filter with Zach Peter. That's me, your naturally platinum blonde pop culture connoisseur, and the reality TV junkie, self-improvement addict, and host with only the hottest tea spilled fresh weekly. For more hot takes, go and give me a follow at Just Plain Zach. You'll get some really fun Instagram stories of me dancing in the shower or of me talking to my Ubers, interrogating them, as you guys like to say. And don't forget to follow us at No Filter with Zach for the latest show news and some really fun, some fun memes. I like to take cameos and, and we make them. It's always a good time over there. So go and give us a follow at No Filter with Zach and get ready because today's tea is going to be hot. It's going to be good. It's going to be juicy. Today's guest is feisty. She's sassy and she looks oh so fabulous today. Please welcome the OG of Dallas, Miss Leanne Lacken. Hi. Hi. How are you? Sweating my balls off. <laughs> I mean, I can, I feel that I'm here in LA and it is so hot i can't i can't right now yeah I, I really like i told you i really believe that satan is uh giving texas the new uh new test grounds to see you know how hot he can get it oh yeah i'm i have no doubt i know it's just ugh, i'm sweaty and musty like i guess musty is not a cute word to describe yourself when you're single in quarantine right <laughs> I have to say, I I'm love curious. this look, though. You I know, love I'm the Gucci clip. Perfect. I love the outfit. The color looks great on you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm trying to look all ray of sunshine. You got it going on. Good. Then I can go have cocktails after this. Yay. OK, so we have so many questions that um that the listeners have sent in for you. But before we dive deep, you have to answer my icebreaker questions. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, first question is, where did you grow up and what part of the world are you currently living in right now? Um, I grew up in Houston, Texas, and I currently live in Dallas, Texas. Mm. What's one word your mother would use to describe you? Pizza. Pizza? Pizza, P-I-T-A. Oh, pizza. oh is that the Adosha? It's an acronym. Ah, what does it stand for? Pain in the ass. <laughs> um, fun fact, what's one thing people would not expect about you from what we've seen on, on Real Housewives? Um, huh. I'm a really good singer. Mm. And I can usually fart my dog out of the room. Yeah, I love it. Um, what is your drink of choice? A skinny margarita, for sure. I'm a margarita girl. Ah, screw it. Give me the fat one. I don't care. I just like margaritas. Do you? I'm so picky about my margaritas. Sometimes, like I, I like a skinny, but like I don't like like the when they use that like neon green fake shit. Like I'm like, no, give me like a real tequila and lime. Yeah, I've never had any neon green tequila. I will tell you, there's a, a restaurant down the road that makes a jalapeno cucumber margarita that is like, yeah, my husband only limits me to, I always sneak in a third when he goes to pee. Um, and he usually has fun when we come home. <laughs> I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. Last icebreaker question, which is my favorite to ask, and that's if you had to be reincarnated, as a Kardashian, which one would it be? God, that's tough. I mean, I think Kim probably has the most outgoing, seemingly outgoing personality, and she's a genuine introvert. Um, but Chloe just really looks like she's having fun. Chloe has the best time. I mean, I have a love hate relationship with Chloe because now she's back with like her baby daddy and he's cheated on her with like everyone in Calabasas that like I want to root for her. But at the same time, I'm like, but you deserve better, girl. I know. I, you know what? I think um, I think sometimes living in the light makes it really hard to get out of your own darkness. Yeah, I agree. And you're just like full yeah. of light tonight with that color. I love it. Yes. Okay, so we haven't seen you on our TV screen since, what, January when the last season wrapped, when the reunion came out. What has been going on? I mean, I mean, the world has been shut down since then. But, like, how have you been staying sane in this, like, quarantine life? I have loved every minute of the quarantine. Yeah. It is weird. I, I'm not the bitch who's working out. I can tell 
<laughs> Ain't nobody want to look at the scale when I step on it. However, um, I've loved it because it's been like a, um, a forced um, calm, a forced mm. zen, a forced, um, you know, you're, I'm, I'm home all the time. I'm actually in uh, one of the yards that I redid the patio on. I've been doing a ton of remodeling. And I'm not done. Like, sell the furniture, get new furniture in. Re I love it. Yeah, I, I, I really. Feel, you're. Really e I feel like in quarantine, you're either like the DIY person that like has all the projects, or you're like the fitness buff, or you're just like couch potato total bum. So, so I really like in my mind, I want to be the fitness DIY chick, but in my, the reality, I'm more the couch potato. <laughs> that every now and then gets tired of just sitting on the couch. So she has a DIY moment. I love it. What are you doing? Do you have any new projects that you've been working on since Housewives? Yes, a ton. Um, we are working on a new book. We, um, I, I, you know, a lot, I'll tell you the one area that the pandemic hit hard and that I've really been spending a lot of time on is trying to help the local nonprofits, even some national nonprofits with mm -hmm. how to raise money, not being able to have events and galas. And so that's been a huge focus of how do we legitimately raise funds online? How do we get the excitement online going that we had in person? Because, you know, I mean, if you think about it, uh, uh, organizations rely on dollars and volunteer yeah. and, um, and right now they're both missing both of them. What organizations are you supporting right now? Um, actually Brian's house just asked me to be one of their ambassadors. So I'm very excited about that. They're going to make the announcement in, uh, I think October, November, um, uh, Brian's house is really kind of close to my heart because um, back in the huge heyday of HIV and AIDS, when, you know, there wasn't a cure dying very quickly, um, babies were born to HIV positive mothers who would die in childbirth and no one would touch the babies. No one would take the babies in. No one would care for them. It was like they had this plague and, and the woman who founded Brian's house was one of the first in the city. And she said, you, I will care for them. Mm -hmm. And little Brian made it a few years and he passed on. And that's the namesake of the organization. Um, and since then, they've gone on to do miraculous things. They work with children of, um, that are really the most vulnerable in society, struggling with mental, physical disorders, um, and families who have no way to care for them plus try to keep this going. I mean, I can't imagine, you know, the mothers who have to go to work right. with a daycare and, and not only that, but having a, a child that needs maybe a little extra like medical needs, uh, daycare with medical needs, you know, so, so that's why, that's why I'm thrilled to be a part of Brian's house. I really am. And they're amazing. And I cannot wait to, once they sort of open their doors, to um, take over their Instagram and their social media and kind of share with you all that they do and the children that are there that are so happy. We just did a, um, a backpack drive to get all the kids ready for school. So I went and it out. Uh, we had contactless backpack drives. So we get, got to put the backpacks in every and the children were you know they were all insisted to come with their mothers and the teachers were there just like you could see the teachers crying how much they missed working with these children and it's yeah. just to see that tells me that there's still so much good left in the world and that's the we want to focus on um, yeah. and then an amazing spread coming out in a wedding magazine in New York uh, in Ooh. September we'll sharing very soon yeah the last time that Richie and I were up in New York in February we did this amazing photo shoot just absolutely beautiful and um, and it'll be coming out in their fall bridal night issue so super excited that's super exciting excited. Yeah. I mean, you know me. There's, listen, honey, I could go for days about what I've got my hands into. I'm working on building a website that's called um, payitforwards.org. And it's all about 
because of the pandemic, not being able to leave our houses, um, having organizations say what they need, like what is your Amazon wish list? Do you need what did what did you want one this week? Diapers, um, dog toys, dog food, flea medication. What is it that you need right now? And so, right. I'm really working hard on that with my team to build that as quick as possible. And it's it's not going as fast as I'd like, but it'll get there. It's moving. As long as it's, it's moving, moving forward. <laughs> moving. So I don't, I don't know if you've heard, but there was an interview that came out recent, very recently from um, someone. I don't know if you're familiar with her, Deandra. She may have also been on Real Housewives of Dallas with you. I don't she, know. What her name. She had, she had some some interesting things to say about you. I think the biggest one saying that you didn't leave Housewives on your own accord, that Bravo had really fired you and didn't give you a choice. Do you want to kind of clarify where that came from and what um, what really went down with your departure from the show? I chose to leave. I think I made that very clear in my people exit. I was asked what I wanted to do. And the reality was I couldn't see a way to go back and be around that group. That group dynamics was never going to change unless I left. So she can me for that and every one of her friends. number two I don't know why she's speaking on me doesn't she have a full life I mean I certainly don't speak on her she had a lot to say she also said let's see this is a direct quote from her she said when she met you uh who she was when I met her years and years ago was not who she was on that show. She portrayed herself in a much different way than who she usually was. And then I found out who she was and I was really disappointed. Wow, that's so interesting. When Deandra joined the show, she was the sweet charity woman and now she's just a raging alcoholic. So yeah, okay. I mean, she has an opinion. Everybody does just like their asshole. Do you feel like there's an opportunity for you guys to like maybe mend fences at some point in the future? She said she's open to it. She said a lot of she said a lot about you, but she said she's at least open to that somewhere down the line, which was a little shocking for me to read. Yeah, considering it's the first time she said it in three years that she would be open to trying to fix things between us, because normally she said, no, I'm not interested. I'm done. It's over. I don't understand why she's speaking so much on me. I'm not on their cast you would think she would focus on moving forward and and she accuses me constantly being <clears throat> obsessed with her and talking about her all the time and yet i have not brought her up and i'm not interested in talking about i mean like really like move on like i my life is so much happier away from the toxicity that she brings to it and the lies that she brings you know i mean the reality is the girl can't help herself and she just she just, you know, honesty is the way to go. Do you feel like there was ever an opportunity for you to want to return to the show for the fifth season? Like if they had changed oh, the cast uh, or not, you just were the place that you're at right now is just not where you could. You know, the reality is I'm a new I was an I am still a newlywed. We just celebrated our one year anniversary. And, you know, what's interesting is the one thing the pandemic has really showed me was um, how little I took care of myself, my husband, my home. I think I spent so much time trying to um, keep up with the constant demands of the show that I didn't realize how much work there was to do around me. And to be honest with you, it's been so incredibly peaceful creating beauty, creating mm -hmm. serenity, creating peace. And that's really where I am now. I mean, I've got my one dog laying in the grass and my other dog sitting on the sofa looking at me um, wins my interview. You know. <laughs> so since this is kind of like a big reflective year and a lot of us are kind of like looking inwards, do you feel like now that you're out of the show and now that, you know, they're kind of still in it and taping, is there anything that you look back on that you maybe regret or wish you had done differently? You know, has your perspective changed since, you know, going through this kind of quarantine experience and being out of the show? Listen, I think if you asked anyone, is there something in their life once up, up after reflecting on it that they would want to change i would think that there's a tremendous amount to change but that being said 
changing our past would change who we are today. And reflection is how we grow. Compassion is what we should offer people to grow. You can have a conversation with compassion and see growth, or you can have a conversation with accusations and see no change. And so for me, I've always been about growth and enlightenment and trying to be better and do better every day. I mean, you know, one of the um, mantras that I repeat sort of when I'm doing stuff or when I have to remember who I am every day in every way, I'm getting better and better. And if that's something that I want to not only live true to, but continue to aspire to. And I can't do do that if I don't make mistakes. Right. Absolutely. That's the only way we grow. And I think when you make mistakes, especially on a television show where you have an audience, like people get to watch you stumble and then they get to watch you get back up and grow with you. You know, I think that's, that's, I think, um, you know, I don't love when Bravo kind of just like cuts people off or fires them without kind of, you know, addressing some of the scandals because I feel like these could be really good teachable moments. Um, How do you feel about how... I will tell you, um, Carrie Brittingham and I have, um, you know, sat down and had drinks and, um, and she has, she even expressed that she would have, she wanted me to come back so that there could have been this growing moment, this information given, um, you know, I think that healing comes from conversation. And Mm -hmm. I think one of the biggest thing our country needs right now is healing. You know, we all need to heal. None of us are perfect. None of us are perfect. And um, she had expressed that she would have loved me to come back. But I just honestly, like I needed the break. I mean, let's look back at season one, season two, season three, and season four. And the biggest gifts you see, the biggest memes you see, the, you know, most iconic moments, um, most quotable moments, um, I'm really only seeing one name and that's a lot of pressure for one human out of six. And to be honest with you, it's also not a fair balance. And so for me, I needed the break to be able to be like, okay, you know what? I want to refine my center. I want to refine my joy. Um, I want regain who I am that I've lost because being a part of a show like that, when you are the constant target, you do lose a certain percentage of your personality, you know, your witty side, your humor. And it's so funny because all my friends now are like, Oh my God, we have our Leanne back. You know, I I think my post today on Instagram uh, was uh, in Malibu. And, you know, after a couple of rosés, I was in the back seat and I was like, Hey y'all, this is what dogs do. And I just stuck my head out the window, you know? I mean, I'm like, that's me. I, at the, my core, all I really want to do is have fun, create laughter and joy, spread kindness and learn. How do you feel about, because I feel like outside of a television setting, when you have friends and if one of your friends kind of has um, a, a not so pretty moment, kind of has a messy moment, you hold them accountable and you have a conversation with them. But I feel like at the reunion, they kind of came at you a lot. How do you feel about the women's reaction to you. And even after the reunion had taped and some of their like interviews afterwards, you know, they, they labeled you a racist and they said that, you know, you, you know, they didn't, I don't want to say had your back because I feel like they didn't feel like they need, they should have had your back. And I think you would even agree that, you know, they, you didn't necessarily need them to have your back, but you could have at least used a friend. Um, I, I first, well, I could have used honesty Mm-hmm. I could have used compassion, which they all claim to be so full of. Um, I, but more importantly, I could have used someone to enlighten me in a gentle way as to how to make things better or to help me make things better. And, you know, one of the biggest conversations that Carrie and I have had since that is, um, that she wished I would have called her and said, listen, this is not who I am. Talk, I want, 
I want to not only sit down and apologize, but tell me, how do I change what I did? What, what was it that is, you know, how is it offensive to use your nationality? Because I do think that, first of all, I the word that they tried to pin on me isn't necessarily the correct verbiage for what conversation I had. Okay. Um, I don't, so I think, I think that was just, you know, there was no other storyline and, um, and again, you know, dump on Leanne is the storyline. So I mean, I'm glad that Carrie and I are in a better place. I'm glad that Cam and I are still friends. Um, but it, after that show, I really was very enlightened to the fact of who, who is actually a compassionate, good person and who isn't, you know? And I think we all, I mean, you think, you look at it, anytime anybody else has ever made a mistake, I've never held them to the coal. Right. I've never tried to brand them a name. I've just simply said, okay, look, you know what? I own that I said it, I apologize. And I didn't see how it could hurt you. I expressed my anger. How do you feel about Brandy, the video that came out about Brandy um, and kind of how the women, some of the women immediately jumped to her defense? Oh, you mean Stephanie jumped to her defense? It's amazing how Stephanie um, sees what she wants to see and, and does what she needs to do to make sure that her life is comfortable. She will never do that show without Brandy on it. That's just the truth. She needs an attack dog and Brandy is the perfect mouth. And mm. Stephanie puppets her. I mean, that's just, you know, what I've seen and have text message evidence of um, through the years, you know? Um, yeah. Not something I really wanna, you know, address because that's their problem not mine um but I, I it's nice to be away from people who are constantly trying to put you in the ground it, right. it really is it, it genuinely is it's nice to be around people who just want to you know have a good time and let you be you and laugh and um you know and just live i mean i think there's there's enough space in the world for all of us Right. And I think it's sad to me when people constantly try to push you out. Stephanie and Brandy wanted me off the show since season one. I mean, listen, the one thing that what's her name said that I am a very big personality. I take up a lot of space in most any room I go into. But if you look around at who my friends are, they're all the same size. And I was, the biggest piece of that puzzle on the show. And I think with me being off it, the puzzles are more balanced and it should be, it should be a more, it'll be a different show. The dynamics should be different. And, um, and I'm not looking to size down my personality. You have a big personality. You, know? you definitely, that's going to be a big personality to replace on the show. I don't think it's you, replaceable. I don't think no. I, no. Well, that was one of the questions that um, one of the fans sent in is what are your thoughts of the new additions to the show, Tiffany Moon and Jennifer Davis? Um, I have not seen Bravo confirm that either one of them are cast members. I know Deandra's PR company sent out um, something that said that they were. Um, and um, I, from my understanding, one has already been knocked down to friend of, and the other one, Brandy, once kicked off the show. And after the video she put out, that got put out last year, I would think she'd be a little nicer. Uh, but that's the rumors I hear. What, um, what cast members are you still in touch with? Cameron. And Carrie. She's the only one. Duber, Cameron, Carrie Duber, Carrie Brittingham. Um, you know, infrequently, again, I think when you're on the show, it's a lot more contact because you're there, you're in the moment, you're talking about, oh, what are you wearing to this party? What are you bringing? You know, how do you feel about this? Um, being away from it, my conversations have a tendency to lean more towards, you know, hey, can you, how can you get locked on this? Like when Cam posted the thing about um, the dogs in Korea, you know? And was like, please help me. And I was like, instantly, yes, I'm happy to share. Yeah. Would you, if you could go back and take back the some of the comments that you made about Carrie, would you take them back? 
Carrie would have to change how she spoke about herself. It, it, it's like, to me, it's like if I said, um, you're an obnoxious Canadian, find that racist. I personally don't, but I can understand how other people, you know, might be offended by it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just think that I, I understand looking back now how it offended, especially the Hispanic community. I do under, I think what never got asked of me was, um, what is my connection, yeah. you know, to the Hispanic community? And I have a very large one. You have to understand I grew up with, um, three girls and two boys across the street who were a Hispanic family who I, to this day, call my brothers and sisters. You know, I would fight for till the day I died. I mean, I remember when my one friend, Patsy, got married, the other two sisters were like, um, Leanne, you stand up and speak for us, your family. That's how family we are. I mean, so I think it's a little, I think even, you know, Carrie would look at it and be like, okay, now knowing all the facts on both sides, because there was a lot of facts that Carrie wasn't aware of. I think now knowing the facts on both sides, a conversation would have been better about why it was, wasn't appropriate rather than name calling. Name calling doesn't really get, get us anywhere. It doesn't solve anything. It doesn't foster a dialogue. It doesn't encourage, you know, there to be, like you said, any growth. How do you feel? Do you feel like there's ever an opportunity down the line for you to rejoin the show? Maybe if they got rid of a few of the girls? <laughs> I don't, I honestly like, um, I, I mean, you know, I don't say no to any future opportunities at all until I look at the situation and see if it's um, a good fit for me. I think one of the things I never was afforded to do on that show was to really take into question, was it a good fit for me? Was it benefiting my life? Was the money I was getting paid, would that be worth trading my brand and my reputation and the constant opportunity for those girls to constantly focus on destroying it? I don't know. Right. I mean, I'm not going to say no, but at the same time, I think it would really, the situation would really have to be, um, encouraging for something that I believe in, which is growth, um, you know, platform to help others, um, comedy, enlightenment. Um, one of the biggest, one of the biggest blessings from being on this show is, um, people still, I had a woman recently reach out to me and she said, you know, I want to thank you for sharing your journey with anger and, um, and controlling it. She said, I never, my husband kind of grew up in similar as I did. Um, And she was saying, you know, I never understood why he gets so angry, but watching you made me understand him so much more that now I can be a part of the solution and not a part of the problem. And to me, that is what the show, that is what I wanted from the show from day one. It is why I continue to uh, talk about things I've been through and how I found hope and how I found healing and how I moved forward. And that is something that is not only valuable, but imperative to me. I love that. And then... Um, CP also wants to know if you can address that there was no real food at your wedding. Oh, you know, listen, if you go to the <laughs> for the meal, honey, you're missing a few things. Don't go. That's the bride and groom don't need your ass there for a $25 meal. Thank you. <laughs> no, there was no food at my wedding. We were starving everyone. There were a couple of kids that really needed to lose some weight. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I love it. So what does life look like now? What, what's on the horizon for you? Um, continuing to do me. I mean, we've got um, a few shows that have, you know, reached out that would like to, you know, potentially have me either as a contestant or a participant. And, um, and we're, I'm, I'm looking at them. You know, I think this time around going into it, I'm definitely much more cautious about looking for the downside of it before the upside. And, um, And I just, you know, as long as it continues to bring something that I can bring light to the world, um, I would love to be a part of it. I love it. 
Well, thank you so much, Leanne, for chatting with me today and for your always honest, unfiltered takes on some of these other ladies. You know, I will say that one of the funniest thing is, um, yes. Uh, and that's the other thing I get. The biggest second thing I get from this show is you're the realest one. And mm -hmm. it's so true because, you know, when my husband and I go shopping, he's like, oh, it's the filter road. Do you want to go down and see if any fit? And I'm like, no, babe. <laughs> Do you feel like there was anything, any misconception or part of your life that wasn't shown on the show that you would like to kind of get out there? No, I mean, honestly, like my life is my life and you're, people are going to choose to view it how they want to view it. Listen, here's something that I really learned in the world. People can only see you from their perspective. Right. And that doesn't change who I am on the inside or how I live. It's just their perspective. Reality is the world is full of billions and billions and trillions of perspectives. So to think that you're the only one that can see the truth is so, it's a little ego. <laughs> Yeah. And I think people only are able to see things from their own perspective based off of their own conditioning, upbringing, people that they surround themselves with that, you know, it sometimes you just have to understand that not everybody is coming from the same place. And even if you don't see things eye to eye, that doesn't necessarily mean, you know, I'm more right or more wrong than you. It just means we have different perspectives. I, I will say one of my a valuable lesson for me is that while I truly fight for fairness in the world, which is, you know, why I'm so involved in charity, probably should have fought a little less for fairness on the show, you know, probably should have just let them do their thing and just did what I needed to do. But, um, woo, mouth of the South girl, I'm just can't stitch that thing <laughs> shut. <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you so much, Leanne. Where can everybody go and give a, give you a follow and support any of your current upcoming projects? Oh my gosh. Instagram, 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 Instagram. I have taken a little hiatus from Twitter and I've enjoyed every moment of that freedom. Ooh, Twitter is um, vile. Twi Twitter's run by Satan. Oh, shut <laughs> It headquarters in Texas. Uh, <laughs> Um, no, but uh, Instagram has really been where I've been living and, and loving and sharing and um, promoting and being me. That's the best part. Just being me, you know, just enjoying yeah. being funny again. So, so yeah, Let, letting my armpit hair grow so I can braid it, you know. You know. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for listening to Hashtag No Filter with Zach Peter. That's me. You can give me a follow at Just Plain Zach or follow the show at No Filter with Zach. And you're going to want to go and follow Leanne because she has some really funny posts that she puts out. And she always looks so glam. I'm loving your look today. I love the little Gucci clip, the hair, the quarantine hair. I'm feeling it. Ah, oh, babe. It's just the quarantine hair is hot and gray, babe. Hot and gray. I mean, this is real quarantine hair right here. My hair is a mess. I can't. I'm like, I need to go get this bleach soon. That way people can believe that I'm still naturally platinum. All right. Yeah, your roots are dark, honey. <laughs> I was like, the roots kind of are cute. Kim Kardashian brought the roots in, and now I'm like, okay, they're a little too rooty now. Now we need to, like, right. you know, go get some some underground bleaching. Everything's still closed in L.A. Um, but thank you guys for listening. Please give me a five-star review because I am a, a millennial, and I love that validation. So go and, and give me all the love. And, again, don't forget to give me a follow at Just Plain Zach. And, Leanne, what's your handle again? At Leanne Locken. At Leanne Locken. Go give her a follow. All right, guys. I will talk to you next week. Bye. <laughs>